It happens to quite a few of us, and while there are legitimate uses for the dark web, it's also a playground for organized crime. Your financial information can be bought and sold, and sometimes even given away for free. And while you may have done nothing wrong, you could still have your money stolen. The dark web, the name alone conjures sinister images of hackers buying and selling the financial lives of innocent people. Unfortunately, there is some truth to all of that. There's nobody that's off limits. It doesn't matter how small you are, mm -hmm. what industry you operate within, everybody is at risk. If you're online, you're at risk. Here's something for you. With the help of David Derajotis, the chief insurance officer at Embroker, we enter the dark web. The dark web is the smallest part of the internet. It's built on an anonymity and privacy, sure. and you need special software to be able to access right. it. Using what's called a sandbox and a Tor browser, we're able to navigate the web without exposure. How many sites like this could you pull up just on this? Oh, there are hundreds of sites. Hundreds. Yeah, absolutely. There prob probably more than that. We're now looking at a list of companies, businesses, big and small all being held for ransom. All the ones in red right now are actively under attack, okay. and you can see that there's a, a clock that's counting down. They're being told by hackers, either pay up or else. This company didn't pay, so they published and they dumped all their information online. Yeah. Your name, birth date, credit card information. Think about the last online purchase you made. All of that info could be included. Criminals now have everything they need to steal your identity and your money. All the ones you see in green are companies that chose not to pay. So what they do is a punitive action. They end up dumping all of their information okay. online. Companies have a choice in all this. They either risk the exposure for their customers and the bad publicity, or they pay up. Sometimes they pay. Yeah. Actually, a lot of times they pay. Those who don't pony up are punished. Free. These sites are for free. Wow. So that anybody. It's punitive, like you said. You didn't pay the ransom. Now all this stuff's going out there, and you're going to get blamed for it. That's exactly it. it it's called double extortion. So before they deploy the ransomware, they'll extract all of the information and they hold it over their head. To avoid all of this, business owners, large and small, need to be prepared. You have to assume that it's going to happen. How can you minimize your damage? How can you prepare ahead of time so that when it does take place, you know exactly what to do? Do you have the SWAT team that's able to step in, have systems restored, have data restored? As for the average consumer, the person whose identity is exposed? Security is all about layers. So first and foremost, making sure that you have a unique password that's long and strong. It comes down to a change in behavior. Get in the habit of changing your password often and use two-factor authentication whenever possible. This is organized crime. It's organized crime, it's yeah. and it's a multi-billion dollar you know, criminal enterprise is what it is. You heard it there, organized crime. And this is just a fraction of what's out there. Next week, we're going into policing the dark web. And is there any way to get this under control? We'll also dive into what else you could find on there. We're talking credit cards, cloned credit cards, stolen credit cards, drugs, Gosh. you name it. It's out there, and it's easier to get than you think. So what's what the, the, the dark web, if it's out there, we only talk about it, it seems in a negative yeah, way. What's true. Are there any good uses for the dark web? <laughs> not, not too many, but there yeah. are. It, you know, it, it gives you anonymity. It gives you privacy. So if you want to remain anonymous and you could search any other site you want you don't have to go to those places uh, and also if you live in a country where you are under heavy mm. restriction maybe from the government and you want to know what's going on outside of the world it gives you access to that so I, I, I can't be the only one right now wondering well how, is there a website for the dark web I mean where do you find yeah, the dark you web? have to get a special browser oh okay and, okay. and you have to get like a, a you want to have a special security in place before you go on your uh, just normal laptop they can before you do it. Okay. Yeah, because there are experts out there that are looking to take advantage of people mm. who are just kind of Clearly. browsing out there. But yeah, there are ways to do it and navigate it safely. But they're hard. It's interesting Sounds to scary. see. Uh, it's scary and it's interesting, but the bottom line is like Taryn, you know, what's talking about when you look at your stuff being stolen, you wonder where it's where it's going. Yes. And there you have it. A yeah. very interesting look at where it goes. Knowledge is power with this one for sure. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave.